All right, so we are officially live, and uh, folks, we are joining Kenya, uh, Nanyuki, Kenya, with Camp Hope, and we are with the children for the next five days presenting the Word of God. They've had sessions and classes and teach all types of stuff through the day. They've been fed. They've been blessed, and now we are about to be blessed as we join them. I'm actually not the official host, so I'm actually going to turn it over to Paul, and you get to boss me around for a moment and let yeah. me know when it's my turn. Brother Paul. Okay. Yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mom, and your team from Shekinah Worship Center. We're blessed to have each and every one of you on board. It's indeed a blessing to be able to worship God at this time of the year, and we thank God for his continuous grace towards this kingdom work. God has been faithful. I want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one from our family of Shatayana Worship Center, Reverend Eunice Lifon, uh, Mother Martin De Silva, Mother Caroline Dallas, and our RIT sister Laquita. I take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you on board. So we are blessed. So today we have our campus here, and we are going to get into praise and worship. And then I'm going to hand the, the, the lesson over to you for today's lesson. So, uh, this morning. All right, let's go again. Amen. It is good to be with you on this day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And we are rejoicing. We are glad in it. We greet you in the precious name of Jesus. And so we are from the small island of Bermuda, and we are glad to join you in Kenya, a place that we love to come and give ministry to. And God willing, November 2024, we will be right where you are today. Now, I know it's late over there, very late, and so I will do my best to go through this first lesson quickly. We do need to pray, and then I will do the lesson. Now, let me say this. I saw a lot of energy, a lot of singing, a lot of jumping. So I want everyone to be awake. Give me 15 minutes. That's all I want. All right? So let's teach the lesson. First of all, I do want to say we've got, and I want you to wave when I mention your name, if you're seen on the screen, we've got Reverend Eunice Lightborn out of the UK. Amen. She's waving hi. And then we have, we have our deaconess Carolyn Dallas out of Bermuda. And we are glad to join you. Also present is our mother De Silva, though she is not on screen. Let us bow our heads in a brief word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we come to you right now as we are about to go into the holy word your holy word you've been with us through praise and worship and now we thank you for being with us through the word bless us as we seek to obey your blessed word this we pray in no other name but the name of jesus the christ Amen. Everyone says amen. Okay, wonderful. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. I'm actually going to share a PowerPoint and have us to see what we need to today. So let's go. Here we go. Your chosen theme is fishers of men. Fishers of men. That's what we're called to do. And the scripture verse you would know the main scripture verse is Matthew 4, verse 19. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And he, and that he is Jesus, it's Jesus, and he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So that's where we're heading. That's where we're going. We are heading to understand this scripture verse right here. 
So I'm going to talk on earlier scripture verses so we can get to fishing. We want to go fishing, everyone. And so let's continue here. And the topic of my discussion for you tonight is this. Are you a light? Are you a light? And the reading, St. Matthew 4, 12 through 16. And now I will share in that reading. It reads, now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtalim, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias, the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people, I want you to hear this now, the people, very important verse, verse 16, the people which sat in darkness, you see why I'm asking you if you're the light? The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Light is sprung up. So children, oh, let me, let me say this. Excuse my manners. I know we're working back and forth with technology, and there we go again. I do want to greet our brother Paul. Let me use my manners before I go any further. I'm trying to get you all to bed, and I'm just rushing. I greet you, brother Paul. God bless you. And Sister Grace, in this magnificent work of the Lord, I honor any pastors, ministers, teachers that are right there with you the minstrel, the invited guests, those who are taking part. God bless you. God bless you in this eternal work that we are doing for Jesus. Amen. To Mother Mary and Father John, in your absence, God bless you. We greet you all. And children, this is about you. I continue now to talk about that great light. And are you, are you a light? Because it's saying that, take a look here, you've got the globe, you've got the world. The world was experiencing darkness. Now the question is, what does it mean when the world is experiencing darkness? It means that the world is not following the way of God. Something is missing. And each and every one of you, I am sure, who attend school, primary, secondary school, college, you are aware that there are people you know who are in darkness. That means that they have not received the light of Jesus Christ. So we know what the word of God is saying when it speaks to darkness. The world was sitting in darkness, comfortable, existing in darkness. God would not have us to be in darkness. That's why, there you go, you, you are the light. The dark world needs the light. And that's our focus for this week. You become light as you become a fisher of men. I will say this again. You become light, light to a dark world, when you are a fisher of man. 
Only then can you ask somebody else to follow you. You can only have someone, someone follow you if you know where you are going. If you are following Jesus, you can then ask someone to follow you. Let's repeat it. If you are following Jesus, I did not say if you are singing church songs. I did not say if you are attending Camp Hope 2023 in Nanyuki, Kenya. I said if you are following Jesus, the light of the world, you now can have someone follow you. Now, what does it mean, everyone, to follow? It means go or come after a person or a thing proceeding ahead. Move or travel behind. You're moving behind someone or something. And if we want people to follow us, in the right way, we have to follow Jesus. To become a fisher of men, you have to follow Jesus, the light of, let's go back to it, the world. In a dark world, you are called to stand out and represent Jesus. This is you representing Jesus in the dark world. So let me now go to the text and deal with it a bit. Because don't forget, we began the text where the world is dark. Let's see what's happening. In verse 12 again, it says, Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Right here, I want to say that there's a timing for you to move. Jesus did not move out of timing. John was before Jesus. Now we can't have two different types of light. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Therefore, John now is cast into prisons, and here comes Jesus. Jesus is on his way to Galilee. Verse 13, it says, And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali. He's making his way. He, he didn't get there overnight. And sometimes in life, when you're going to be the light, when you want someone to understand Jesus, when you want someone to be a Christian, it does not happen overnight. But it will happen. It will happen. See, I'm getting there quick. Verse 14, look at it. That it might be fulfilled. Oh, this is important. This is so important. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, listen to me. It does not matter how you got to where you are. You have a purpose to fulfill. God has already spoken over your life. You may think that, oh, I'm just here and alive. No, 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 no. You have a purpose. Don't forget, the world is dark. So your purpose is to shine forth. Let's go to the next verse and hear what's going on. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. That is a very detailed verse. It's very specific about how Jesus is getting to Galilee. Nothing untidy. Talk to him, Seaman. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Children, teenagers, adults. It matters how you do what you do. 
It matters how you go about representing Jesus. You cannot sing at Camp Hope and then fight somewhere else. You cannot clap and dance and praise God at Camp Hope and then represent darkness outside. You have a responsibility because you know about Jesus. Somebody is looking at you, how you do what you do, how you talk, how you sing, how you dance, how you move, how you help each other. Are you shining forth the light into a world that's very dark? Let's read on. This is the final verse, folks. Look at it. The people which sat in darkness, hallelujah, watch this now, saw great light, hallelujah, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Ah, so my question to you is, are you light and are you springing up? You know, as I read that verse 16, I was reminded about Psalms chapter 1 where it talks about don't walk, don't stand, and don't sit and take counsel with those that don't agree with your God. Because those people are just like these people right here, the people with set. Don't you get comfortable. Don't you ever get used to sitting with people who don't believe that light has sprung. Don't you ever get comfortable sitting with people who don't worship your Jesus. The people which sit in darkness, they will sit in darkness. They will sit comfortable not being a part of the kingdom of heaven. They will sit and invite you to sit with them in darkness. Well, Pastor Seaman, what, what is darkness? Darkness is anywhere where Jesus is not. If Jesus isn't there, dark. Again, I am asking you, are you light? Can someone count on you? Someone who is in darkness to spring forth? Can you spring forth? Can you give a testimony? Can you sing a song? Can you quote the scriptures for them? I know that Great Hope Children's Home know like 64 scripture verses. They need that word. They need the hope. The word of God, the scriptures are the light of the world. And you have to see what's going on in the world. Let's go back to it and say that that's not God. That's not light. That's not holy. That's not pure. That's not the goodness of the Lord. Oh, yeah? Then this is your responsibility. Shine forth. Spring up. Get going. Don't be lazy. Speak forth. Represent Jesus. Because only then can you say, follow me. You get to say, follow me when you're following Jesus Christ. So it's follow me as I follow Jesus. Don't just follow me because I happen to be in front. No, are you following Jesus? When you do that, our final verse again for the day. Ah, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. This is not any old light. This is Jesus. The light of the world. That's why it's great. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, they were in death. Sinners are in death. If you don't know Jesus, if you have not invited Jesus to come into your heart, to be in charge of your life, to be the one 
that you follow every day, you are in darkness. And you surely cannot have people to follow you if you are in darkness. You are needed. Are you light? Because when you follow Jesus, you are light and you can spring forth. Oh, yes. Better than a flashlight, better than a candle, better than the lights that you can turn on via electricity. This is the light of the world. And his name is Jesus the Christ. And I wind it down here by saying and by asking, lights of the world, are you a light? Have you earned the beautiful privilege of saying to someone in darkness, I follow Jesus. I am therefore a light of this world and you can follow me. That's how you will become a fisher of man. If you're not following Jesus, you cannot fish and catch all of the sinners who are lost in the world and need Jesus. So I want to encourage you today to consider this through the night and we'll catch up with you tomorrow with our questions for review and we'll carry on from there. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together, everyone, and let's give God praise. Amen. Let's wave our hands and give God praise. Give God thanks for his word. Brother Paul, I think I will release the mic to you. We thank God for this opportunity uh, to be able to hear the word of God. Because of the challenges, you have not been able to get everything, but you sort it out. If you're here, and you have not given your life to Christ. If you want people to follow you so that you can become a fisher of men. If you have not yet given your life to Christ and you want to become a fisher of men, if you have not yet given to become a fisher of men, this is another chance for you. We have our pastor here. She's going to lead you into Christ. Let's stand up. Praise God. Praise God. If you're here and you have not yet given your life to Christ, come up and abide with our Joe Coca. No, we better put it on my shelf for Jesus in the Leo. And if, if you love to give your life to Christ today, if you want to become a fisher of men today, you know because I can only na pastor those who go go so far more me too. Kamu gependa koko kasi pele. Dabla we kujo koi kam na gependa dabla ni kito kapa ni si kito ke kama bine ni kito ko. Amen. Tu tu ta tu kuto misama. Tutaimba pambiwe kwa hulu. Tutaimba kwa hulu. Una kwa hulu. how excellent.
and we are not expecting your God. You remain to be faithful, and you remain to be God. Thank you, Father, and thank you, Jesus. If you don't have a secret, if you don't have a secret, if you're here and you've not given your life to Christ, kama na ndogo kuja tu sababu kuna kambi. Bado unajipenda na maisha yako kwa Yesu Kristo. Christ is not yet your savior. If you're here and you've not given your life to Christ. Hallelujah. Just we put on us na mambo kwa kwa jogo. You know me for that. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you for this day, a day that you made, you made for us to dwell in, to give your name praise, to give your name glory. And Father, as we have met with your children, you've met with us, and we've sung, we've praised, we've worshipped, and we've heard the word. God, it is our prayer that if anyone knows not Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life, that they would yield, that they would give their lives to Jesus Christ. We thank you for your blessed word and that we indeed will be lights of the world. God, I pray that you will keep the children, keep all of the workers, the ministers, as they go through this night to welcome another day. God, we want to be in your will. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Hallelujah. You have your way. Thank you for loving us so much that you gave your son, Jesus, so that we would have life. Bless us on this night. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. God bless amen, you. All. Amen. 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 Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for the inspiring word of God. May God continue to bless you and may God continue to strengthen you. As long as God has given us breath, we will serve him with all that we have. So thank you very much, ma'am, for that amazing word of God and also for the rest of our team uh, for enduring up to the end. Our service was a little bit longer than the normal one. <laughs> so thank you for uh, sacrificing the time. You normally, we normally say time in, in God is not time wasted, it's time invested. So thank you very much, Reverend Eunice Lightbone, uh, our mom, Caroline Dylas, and uh, RIT Sister Laquita. I cannot see her. I don't know if she's. Yes. She had to go. Yes, now, mom, Maxine De Silva, thank you all very much, and thank you for being there for us. We really appreciate and God bless you. We will see each other tomorrow when we work on the flight. Our today's flight was a little bit technical. We were trying to do a lot of things at the same time, doing two, three, uh, three cast, uh, cameras. But unfortunately, and may God bless you abundantly. All right, God bless you, Brother Paul. Brother Paul, I don't know if you taught him this, but anyway, and you know what I'm saying? Blessing. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Do you want to go? All right. All right. What okay. You can do it once more. Yeah, we're going to do that once more, and they're going to take up the volume level higher. And you know what I'm saying? There you go. Yeah. All right, Brother Paul, you're in control, so you can sign off. And we will yeah. we'll chat. I'll I'll be messaging right. you. 
All right. Bye, everyone. Okay. Thanks, team. Bye. God bless those of you online. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye.